January, we spent a few days in Fukushima. The region was hit by a devastating earthquake and tsunami 13 years ago, and we wanted to find out if the local people were getting back to their normal lives. Our first impression of the affected area was that there weren't many people on the streets. The first stop was a village called Itate in central Fukushima prefecture. It was fortunate enough to have avoided major damage from the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. However, it is only 40 kilometers away from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was damaged by the tsunami. And unfortunately, the entire village was contaminated by radioactive materials that were released. This was evident from the Geiger counter readings we took, which started beeping along the way. The village has turned into a nuclear wasteland. More than two-thirds of the villagers have left, with only 1,500 of the regional 6,500 inhabitants remaining. One villager told me that the area was once known for its picturesque mountains and lakes, and now it's sad to see such a treasured land deserted. Prior to the disaster, the villagers were unfamiliar with terms like microcivet or Geiger counter, but now radioactive data is ubiquitous. In the grocery store, there is a special corner where people can check if the food they purchased, for example, locally grown radishes is radioactive or not. We also explored the forest where the radioactive data was even higher because no decontamination has taken place there. It's already above four. At that time, we didn't think much about the radioactive thing. But after going back home, worries crept into my mind. Is that safe to stay there? Will I get cancer in the future? Maybe I'm overreacting. All well, these questions have been lingering in Fukushima for about 13 years. As we said goodbye to Itada village, we headed to Namia town which was also among the areas most affected by the 2011 disaster. We caught a glimpse of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. As we approached the plant, we noticed that the radiation levels were increasing. During our visit, we went to the Albany Primary School, which was a very emotional site. The school was hard to locate because the earthquake nearly wiped out the entire area. However, there were a few statues remaining, which reminded us that there were once students playing, laughing and learning right here. One of the statues reads, Fulfill your inner heart. It was difficult to imagine the moment when the disaster occurred, but it must have been a terrible experience for all involved. On a sunny day, we run to a fishing port to chase the sunrise. The fishing boats were anchored by the shore and seagulls were flying to the sunlight. Everything was just peaceful and breathtaking. However, as I stared at the sea, I couldn't help but think about the amount of radioactive materials from the Fukushima plant that had poured into it accidentally at the time of the disaster, and more recently, deliberately, as treated waste. The sea is no longer the same. 